Blimey um, Collective are four individual artists who all have very distinct practices that are very different to each other, but we all have a, a common kind of conversation. We're all interested in making new work, all interested in working together and exploring different themes with other participants as well. And I think that um, this project, Blimey Lucretia, has allowed us to explore and further extend our relationships um, with each other, but also think about how that sits in um, the culture of today and, and looking at it in a contemporary way. The story of Lucretia begins with Sextus, the eldest son of Tarquinius, who was sent to perform military services. One day, Sextus invited his friends for supper and drinks at his house. Among his guests was Tarquinius. The men started talking about their wives, and fueled by wine, each of them praised his own wife excessively. He finally declared that no one was more worthy than his wife Lucretia. As his friends scoffed, he invited them to ride their horses to his house and see for themselves what his wife was doing at home. The men agreed that they all went on horseback to the city. They visited each of their houses and found every single one of their wives getting ready for a night out. Finally, they arrived at the house of Lucretia and found her with a servant working on, on her spinning in the middle of the house. It was then that Sextus was said to have been seduced by both Lucretia's beauty and virtue. Their plan was to visit their wives without warning so that their wives' true personality could be discovered. When the men arrived at Lucretia's home, they discovered her wool-working with her slaves by her side. Sextus saw Lucretia as a beautiful and virtuous woman. Sextus, having decided to seduce Lucre Lucretia because of her virtues and modesty, returned to her home a few days later. I think it offers us alternative means of looking at what, what both our own practices are and what collective practice is and how... I think this project in particular, it's really interesting how when we first thought about doing it and we were talking about a reinvention of Blimey or Blimey um, changing quite dramatically from what it had been before, that we've ended up responding to this project in, a, in an incredibly collective way and that just seems to feel right rather than everybody, all four of us doing something individual as a response to the painting. I, th I really enjoy the way we've ended up doing something both collective, the four of us, but then spreading that collective practice out into all the people that have contributed to the project and then them spreading the project. It's just the sound of the needle going through. No, like so. If it's it's like a story like this, mm. and it has like this massive mm. kind of legacy to it. Mm. But if you're walking around and you just see the title, then mm. you won't kind of attribute that mm. whole kind of background to it. Yeah, but they're quite sanitised, aren't they? Don't know how to sew. We can help you with that. So we don't expect anybody to start sewing immediately. But it might be that you have an idea straight away and you can make a start. We've got the next kind of 50 minutes together, 45, 50 minutes. So you might want to have a chat about the paintings. So when you said you said that you found the exhibition quite emotional, can you, can you like tell us a bit more about? Um, I find it emotional because it's something that still happens today, and there are a lot of voices that are not being heard or yeah. are too scared to be heard. Yeah. And then there's people who, who lie about it as well, which can cause other harm to other people. Something, something quite magical happens both during the conversations and also when we put all of those things together. So there's a kind of a strength of all those individual responses when the, to see them all together. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what that looks like in the exhibition. And also, I suppose, the idea of um, textile badges as being... Um, maybe uh, symbolic of solidarity. Sextus woke late in the night and went to the room where he knew Lucretia slept. Careful not to wake her slaves who slept by her door, he entered her room with his sword in his hand. He woke her. He told her his name 
and bade her be silent and remain in the room, threatening to kill her if she attempted either to escape or to cry out. With no immediate source of aid, Lucretia was forced to listen to the strange proposition of Sextus. As he said, if you will consent to gratify me, I will make you my wife, and with me you shall reign for the present over the city my father has given me, and after his death, over the Romans, the Latins, the Tyrrhenians, and all the other nations he rules. For I know that I shall succeed to my father's kingdom, as is right since I am his oldest son. Sextus found Lucretia to not be moved to act by either fear of death or the declaration of his love. He then vowed to kill her and then slay one of her slaves, and having laid both their bodies together, will state that he had caught Lucretia misbehaving with the slave and punish her, so that Lucretia's death will be attended with shame and reproach, and her body will be deprived both of bur burial and every other customary rite. In the morning, Sextus returned to his camp in Ardea to continue his military efforts. The distraught Lucretia sent messengers to her husband and her father, Spurius Lucretius, prefect of Rome, asking them each to come at once with a good friend because a terrible thing had happened in her husband's house. She greeted him and demanded he summon all those he could. Then, in response to his hasty and urgent summons, the most prominent men had come to his house as she desired. She began at the beginning and told them all that had happened. After promising her that they would pursue Sextus, they tried to appease Lucretia's sorrow by saying what had happened to her was not her fault. Then, as the men looked at each other in despair and confusion, Lucretia took up a dagger and plunged it into her heart. She died amid the cries of her husband and father. This dreadful scene struck the Romans who were present with so much horror and compassion that they all cried out with one voice that they would rather die a thousand deaths in defence of their liberty than suffer such outrages to be committed by the tyrants. Publius Valerius, a Roman aristocrat, was then sent to inform Lucretia's husband of the misfortune. In the account, Lucretia asks those around her to avenge her by the means they find necessary. She does not give direction on how to avenge her, and thus those she leaves behind are responsible for the ensuing acts. The ensuing actions are thus in high honour of Lucretia rather than commands from her. Four of us, we were asked to respond so you can to the cry of Lucretia. Yeah. 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 So we looked into it, we know the story behind it. Yeah. 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 Is this going to be free to work? Yes. I have a rough idea from what I've overheard in the office. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so that she killed herself yeah. after being raped because yeah. she was virtuous. Yeah. And, uh, Maybe we should just write on it, lie back and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. When the group of men went to see how virtuous these women were, all of the other women were, so what were they all drinking? So all they yes. all yes. they were all could drinking do was just choose. Yeah. 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 To avenge Lucretia's death. The accounts of the violence against Lucretia emphasise the excess of tyrannical power, banishment and the death of the offender and the creation of a new civil order. Whether Lucretia was a real woman or mythical figure, her life is representative of Rome under tyrant ruling. Lucretia is the ultimate decision maker of her life. She upholds her values when deciding her rape is more virtuous than being depicted as an adulterer. Her suicide is planned entirely on her own. She does not ask her father nor her husband for their input. We looked at uh, other women artists, uh, the way that they've worked, and we were particularly inspired by um, Judy Chicago's dinner party and the idea of, um, and Judy Chicago's idea of uh, celebrating or um, making people aware of women artists that were underrepresented. And, that, and so borrowing from that, we met, we've made a table, a triangular table that we take round to various events, a, um, a collapsible 
triangular table that we take round to various events and various audiences and invite people to take a seat at the table and to talk about the painting from their point of view, to listen to other people's opinions about the paintings or share opinions about the paintings and at the same time ask people to um, respond by sewing or embroidering something onto a textile patch of with an image of Lucretia printed onto it and sort of playing around with ideas of um, sewing as the virtue that was possibly Lucretia's downfall.